Hello everyone, welcome back to another Interact tutorial review. In this video, I'm going to review the SelfCat logo, how you design a logo. It's actually a relatively uh, simple tutorial, but it focuses on voxel modeling techniques, something we don't really see a lot. And this is really great for beginners. Uh, this type of technique, voxel modeling, is not necessarily good to create very complex objects but for features like creating a logo, for example self-cat logo, this is actually quite a good technique and it's a very good beginner to 3D modeling um, tutorial overall. So to get started what we do is we create a simple voxel so we need to create a basic cube and we're going to use the same shape, we're not going to deform it, we're just going to change the size. So instead of 100 we setting all sides to 50 and then we're also going to position it. Now, this is a beginner tutorial, so I'm going to explain a few very basic things. You can see this grid over here is divided into four sections called quadrants, and the designer is going to position them by the edge of one quadrant, and it's actually going to make up the same size. In the workspace settings, you have idea how to make the size of the grid, and also how small each voxel of the grid should be, how small they should be divided. And this is being positioned over here to 25 by 25, on the X and Y. Now why 25 is working here is very interesting. So you see over here we have a width, height and depth of 50, but to fit it over here we use a size of 25. It's even more interesting because we know based on the settings, workspace settings, that the size of each box over here is actually 50. So what happened here is the giveaway is you can see this lines that we show over here it's in the center of the cube so we measure everything from the center of the object and also from the center of the mesh of the scene which is basically where they meet at this point over here in the center of the scene where all quadrants meet and then at the center of the mesh in more advanced settings you learn other tutorials you can adjust everything in selfcad but that's the default setting so if i need the center of this mesh to be um, uh, if I need this mesh to be in this quadrant and I measure from the center, I have to use half measurements, which is basically why I move it by 25 and 25, which positions it basically into this uh, quadrant completely. Okay, so with that said, we have the first voxel, and this is going to be the only object we're going to use throughout the entire design to make the logo. We're just going to use this as a building block, and this is what we're going to redo. Now, this story is going to show you a few ways how to work with it. Uh, the first thing is simply copying. Now you cannot really see the copy over here, but you can see it in the side of the screen you can already see two objects. And it has a name also. The name is named automatically. You can always click and rename it. And if you copy an object, this was automatically named Mesh 8. If you copy it, it will be Mesh 8 and adding a 1 to it. And then make another copy, add a 2 and so on and so forth until you rename it. So what we did over here is we made a copy. Now we're going to position it using simple move. And we're going to move it x by 25 so now it's positive 25 so to move it over to the other side would be a negative 25 so from positive 25 to negative 25 the absolute value we actually moved it by 50 which is a perfect align they touch each other perfectly aligned now what we're going to do over here we're going to show you another way to move we're going to hold on the control key it says over here hold control command button and drag object so once i click on my control key it basically tells me to drag this. So I'm going to click on this object and drag it. And once I click on it to drag it, it gives me a point to snap to. Okay, so now we have the basic things that are basically just three voxels aligned. We're going to select all three of them. Now, once we select three of them, um, some of the tools are not working when multiple objects are selected, and some are. Uh, in this case, we're going to use here Copy Offset, which is a tool that can work on multiple objects selected. And we're going to move in the other direction by 50, minus 50, which if you can guess what's going to happen, and we're going to make two copies. So what that means is that it's going to make one copy, and it's going to move it, let's see, where's the minus? So we're moving it on the Z direction. Z axis in this case is over here, the depth. So the front is a plus, and the back is a minus. You can see the sign over here, a minus. So we're going to move it by 50, so it's going to make this block, and then we make two copies, which means the second copy will be moved again by 50. And then click copy. So this is exactly what happened. It made one copy to the next and then another copy. Now I'm going to close it. Now this looks like a simple cube, but it's actually made of a lot of combined voxels. And where this will help is that now we're going to deselect 
most of the voxels and keep selected only some of them. So we deselecting all of this that is marked by red. So we have selected only the center voxels and we simply going to click delete. You can click command delete or click on this option delete over here. And we have removed these voxels so we are left only with this. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're selecting these and this. So the two front voxels is being selected and we're clicking on the move tool and it's going to show you now it's going to make a copy first and now it's going to show you an other way to move stuff so before we know exactly what we did we had an x we positive x we moved negative x we moved copy offset that was the benefit that can make two copies and copy offset by the way is one of the best tools for voxel modeling because you can make endless amount of copies plus other features which can help you very easily create complex scenes um, but for basic designs over here also sometimes you don't know the measurement in the scene where to move it which is going to show you now the move by feature if you click move by i don't care where it's positioned how it is i just know that i want to move it up by 50. so that's basically what it's done move it up by 50. in this particular case the moving up by 50 is actually moving this um, by position 50 the same idea so by and two would be the same but that's not always the case and now once we have this selected, it's going to show you another helpful tool, which is very good for voxel modeling, and that's the inverse selection. So I don't have to pick everything else. I've worked with these two. If I click inverse selection, it's selected now everything else, except that was previously selected, these two, and we're going to copy it. So we have a copy here that's positioned aligned to this, and now we're going to move it to 100. So we moved it up, and we got this basic shape, and we close it. Okay, so now we have done the basic design is done. So we want to combine everything. So it's going to use the select all features. So all voxels are selected. And we're going to use the union feature. The union feature is solidifying them as a single object that's different than merging um, or grouping them. It actually makes them a single unit. So after union, we're no longer thinking about voxels. We think about a mesh that is combined. It was initially designed as voxels now we have a single mesh that is completely um, combined when i say combined it means that it deleted a lot of inside faces because if you think about two voxels that are neighboring each other each voxel has a face the outside the inside from all sides and if you combine two neighboring voxels you need to delete all inside faces and merge them together stitch them together and that's what union is doing so now we're going to simply add um, styling to it so we're going to go to the polygon selection and this will show me how what I need to select. Highlights green. So I'm selecting everything that is highlighted green. And because it's polygon, even though this is made up of a lot of small faces, because I have polygon selection, I can select each flat surface as one. And now what we're going to do here is once this is highlighted, I'm going to go to the material selection. So I can simply color it, but we want to actually add material because the self cut logo uses material. In material, there's an option you can set material, but we're happy with what it is. We're going to go to textures. And in textures, there's an option default, but we're going to go to custom, a custom texture. And to add a custom texture, you need to load something. So we're going to add a texture. Now, normally you will have here to browse from your computer, but because we are in a tutorial, we replicate that with something load from tutorial, which is basically the same as loading from your computer, just something we have saved for this tutorial. And once it's loaded, it just adds it to your custom library. You may have here many things. And now once it's added to the library, we need to click on it. And that basically adds it to this. Now we're going to finalize. We're not done yet. We need to make it look good. But for now, we're just adding a texture. So we're finalizing it. And now we're going to use the inverse selection to get the other part. Now once we have selected everything else, the other part, we're going to again repeat the same process we did before. We're going to textures. We're going to use custom. We can reuse the one we've previously uploaded, but we actually want to add a different texture. So we're going to load for the tutorial and we're going to use the other one that we have added now and we're finalizing it. So at this point, we're going to click on the grid to deselect everything and everything is deselected. Now what you see over here, what's happening here is that the texture we have added is being added to each voxel separately. So you can see the design is repeated to each voxel separately and we need to fix that. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the UV feature and UV this original UV, which was copied from the original voxels, which makes it each image is being repeated in each voxel individually. We don't want that. We want this to be based on box UVs. There's a lot of settings over here, a lot of different options to make UV, but this is the option that works best over here, that we have the image is positioned 
across each f a plane basically each box the way this is a box uv each box gets the entire image selected so the design is repeated the way we expect them to design expect them to be uh, repeated but we have to repeat the same function for this uh, one so we have once you add two different materials uh, two different images or different colors doesn't matter it will create a general a different material and we have material zero and now we have material one so zero is the first one we just worked now we're going to go to material one which for a minute it highlighted you know what you're working on and we're going to do the same thing we're going to go to box uvs and we finalize it so now basically this is done tutorial is done and i just want to show you here that once you have added materials you can go to the material section over here and you can just select any material one into this material you can select the entire thing at once and you can anytime go and make some changes different uvs or different images different colors wh whatever you need to change now the tutorial is done but what i want to show you now here is how you, how you actually export them i mean you're designing this logo because you wanted to get them exported so the basic thing to export is if you go to the export option you have a png image you export as a png image and it will export and it will export the way it looks like the way it's positioned on the scene so you can manually position them and so on but i want to show you here actually what you need to know about positioning something with a little bit more advanced which is related to the camera setting so the first thing i'm going to do here is i'm going to position this in the center of the scene because everything revolves around the center and the camera is much easier to set when it's focusing on the center of the scene so to do that to position the center, we're going to click on move, we're going to click a center object. And center object, basically all it does, it resets everything to zero, zero, zero. So this is now in the center of the scene. Now, if I export this as it is with this angle, I will get an image like this. I can export it like this. I'll get an image like this and so on. But if you want to be correct, 100% perfect, not just visually over here in kind of approximation, you can go to the, um, let's see, it's in the, camera settings over here in the settings we have camera settings then in camera settings it's interesting what you can see so if you see what happens if i click on the reset camera and the home button this is without even opening this you have the home button if i click on the home button this gives me the default view and the default view is always based on the size of the scene so if my size of the scene would be in the workspace settings if my size would be let's say instead of 700 my size would be 1000 and I finalize it now if I go over here home it's basically positioned as 1000 1000 1000 so that's basically the average position which focuses equally divided based on the size of it now everything will change based on moving or scaling the camera so one thing for example if I'm gonna do look over here look at is also where the camera focuses is at the center zero 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 this is why I centered the object because now it looks at the center of the object now, if I would go and focus on one side, let's say I want to do in the front view, I will see only one side of the mesh, which in some cases that's what you want. But if I click on this, what's happening here is it focuses on 75 over here, and this and this is a reset. And this actually depends also how far it's away from the camera. You can zoom in and zoom out, and it depends also on the size of the object. If I'm going to change the size of the object, the positions over here will be changed. So it's basically quite complex how you do everything. Um, so if you need to have a specific angle how to focus you can enter the position over here you can change the look at uh, but in most cases if you want to get a, a perfect view kind of an exact angle you just click on the home button and you export it you can also have a perspective uh, versus with the graphic view perspective is usually much better for imaging and in this case you can also switch it from here perspective or the graphic but the basic idea where we normally export it is clicking on the home button and then go export and then click png image and then if i open it that's basically it this is what we just created this image and it looks actually quite good okay i hope this was helpful and please let me know in the comments if you want me to show um, anything else or if you have any other questions thanks for watching and bye for now